This is part three of the ratios and observational thingy. Let's boogie. Come on, dog. Let's find a good dog. That's a good dog. Uh, let's get a bigger dog. You guys can't see anything because it's on my other monitor. But I'll bring it in. Actually, I want... I want a dog and... I want a dog in a position that um, is a good... Like full body dog. What? Dog looking up? I didn't search that. Dog full body. Okay, here we go. Stock photo. German Shepherd. Hell yeah. Bonk. Look, it's even got the fucking stock. Alamy stock photo. Thanks, Alamy! Okay. This uh, stream was brought to you by Alamy. It's not. And then we're also gonna find a dog skeleton. This will actually help you kind of. Simplify stuff. Uh, that's pretty fucking close. Not the same though, but for now, hide it. We'll hide it. The point of this is not to be exactly the same because this dog's head is a lot smaller than that dog. Um, uh, but yeah. So, the first thing I would do if I'm, like, analyzing a creature, like, I've never drawn this before, I've never, I've never fucking seen a dog. Okay, if you've never seen a dog, then you'd want to look up YouTube as a dog, you'd want to fucking, you'd want to, if you can get to see one in real life, do it, they're great, go look at a dog, they're cool. Um, you want to be as familiar with it as possible, but then, you know, after a point, you know, if they're moving around, it's kind of hard to draw, so... Uh, you do want to get a reference that's that's pretty good like this is a full body one and What I would start out with is actually just the general ratios of this dog, right? So we have a couple things here. We have it standing. Okay, cool and This is about as tall as it is as high. This is as long as it is. Okay, cool. So like oh You can kind of get an idea like oh, it's like it's rectangular. Okay, so a dog's not gonna be taller than it is long, right? Like, that sounds basic, but that is like the very first, like, ratio thing that you're gonna notice. And it's good. This sort of thing is like, oh, okay, well, fuck. They're long. They're longer than they are tall. How long, though? Like, do we even know? Let's see. That's about as long. And then what if we turn it sideways? Okay, we got one. Cool. And then if we do another one, copy, paste. Eh. About, is that like half? And no, not quite half. That that would be half. So like, it's almost half. It's almost like fucking one and a half times as long as it is tall. Interesting. Okay, see? Cool. So with this information, now you can like kind of break it down just a little bit more. Right. Layers. Killing me. Killing me, layers. Typically, if I'm drawing an animal or anyone drawing an animal, they'd want to break the animal into a couple parts. And then you can, like, start planning it out a bit more. Uh, you want to keep in mind the head. Right? And you want to keep in mind the chest. Right? And then you want to keep in mind the butt. Okay? Like the hips, rather. And some other things that you'll see people be doing is stuff like an action line. Right? So in this pose... That's kind of the general line of it. You can do it all in one stroke, then it's usually a better like flow to it. But that's not really the point. This isn't really an action-y photo or anything. This is just a standard whatever. But where all of these come from is actually a skeleton, right? These are the main components uh, that that are going to like change any ligaments or or not ligament, whatever. They they'll change any pose. Of, of your creature. So the main anchor points are again. I don't know if this is gonna show up. Oh, never mind. I was gonna just overlay this, but I'm pretty sure it's not the same. It's not. Look at that. Whatever. I don't want to get too nitty gritty into the, like the anatomy of like creatures and how they work, but I do. I think this is important to kind of just keep in mind that these pivot points. The shoulders, the chest, this whole thing. I mean, the rib cage in general, because this isn't going to move, right? The rib cage is solid. The hips are going to dictate a lot of where the legs are going and stuff. And then 
the skeleton is going to dictate, like, especially here, like, the body's not going to move, the hips aren't going to move. Well, they will, but this inside area is stretchy because there's guts and shit in here. So this can stretch if the dog is, say, running or if the dog is, like, curled up, right? So this is malleable, right? These are not malleable. The tail is rigid, but malleable. It can move around. And then we got the head and the neck can again. This is all malleable, too. We've got fluff. We've got whatever here. There's a ton of ton of dog stuff, you know, um, then we got stuff like the arms and the legs. These things move based on joints and then they also move down here. So these are more ratio stuff that I'll get to in a sec, but simply some of the bigger ones, the most important things you'll want to keep in mind are things like actually the ratios between the bones, right? So this is just the upper part of the arm. The fucking wish I had the name for this. I know this is the humerus. I wish I knew what the fuck this was. <laughs> what is that? Oh my god. Oh my god. Arm bones. I mean, that, that's the shoulder, shoulder blade, but what is the arm bones? Uh, wow. Is this in, this is a different language. Great. Wait, humerus? Really? I thought that was a humerus. Oh, that's the femur. I'm dumbass. Oh my God. Okay. All right. This is, okay. First off, this is the shoulder blade. It's not the fucking humerus. This is the humerus. Humerus. And then this is the elbow. Elbow. This is the forearm. This is the wrist. This is the like paw slash like tarsals. Tarsals? Carpals? Car carpals. Tarsals? Carpal tunnel. So they're carpals. And then these are the little phalange. And then same over here. We got the hips. These are dem hips. Then this is the femur. This is the knee. This is the shin. This is the heel. This is the car tarsals. And then these are the flangy. Right? Did I get carpals and tarsals right? I feel like I don't know actually. It's been too long since I've had since I've fucking done anatomy study. Don't be like me. Always study anatomy. Always. And then once you think you know it, fucking go relearn it. Hand bones. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Hand bones. Uh, phalange, yeah. Uh, carpals were something. Yeah, carpal bones. Uh, okay. Oh, that's actually like where your wrist bone is the carpal. Oh, and then metacarpal is like this upper part. Okay. All right. So I was right. Metacarpal. Whatever. Okay. Point is, these are something you would want to keep in mind, like the ratio of, right? So you've got this thing. Oh, okay. That's pretty big, but it's actually kind of similar to this. Like, these are pretty close, you know? No one's gonna really, like, yell at you. In fact, th this is a little shorter, but, you know, who knows? This is pretty close. And then this is actually relatively close, too, right? Like, this is close. This is pretty fucking close. Let's copy-paste and let's do some direct, direct measurement. That's pretty fucking close, right? Look at that. So, typically, for a lot of canines, or maybe not cats, but canines and... Depends on the other animals. I think horses are like that too. Maybe not. Um, but you'll have this one to one to one ratio as far as these bon bones go. The shoulder pads, the shoulder blades rather is one. The uh, humerus is one. And the uh, fucking god damn it. What are they called? The forearm bone. <laughs> forearm bone. Let's go back to anatomy. Oh, the radius and the ulna. Okay. Um, radius and the ulna are about one. So this is one to one to one ratio. This is really good to know because when you're fucking drawing these and then you got this, which is like not not one. It might be like half, you know. It could be half. Uh, when you're drawing these, you could just kind of like throw them down, you know, you could one to one to one. You just keep them similar size. You could also like slightly style them, but that's kind of, you know, changing up what creature it looks like. So I wouldn't even really suggest that. Um, and this is pretty much the same for the, the, the legs, too. This is the femur, about one. This is the shin, 
Wait, femur? Yeah, yeah. And then it's the shin, and then this is the heel. If you include the heel, it's about one to one to one also. Um, if you don't include the heel, then it's a, it's a little bit shorter. Uh, but, you know, if you draw with an elongated foot, I don't think anyone's gonna complain one way or the other. So, this is a bit more, like, intricate as far as, like, the ratios go. Because we're going, we're talking about ligaments here. And the ligaments are important enough, because they're ligaments, to have their own, like, study of, of, of ratios. This one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one thing works a lot for animals, but it's not always the case. It's not exactly the case either. So if you're like, oh, my design's looking a bit more human, why? Well, this is usually why, at least in the arms and the legs. Um, let's keep breaking it down. So before you even get to that point, though, you probably want to actually just make that square a little bit smaller and notice that, oh shit, look at that. That's like a perfect fucking square. So the distance between where the chest is and the, like, hips are, the distance of where the legs and the feet are, like, placed, this can be a square. This isn't, obviously, if a dog's running or if it's laying down, it's not going to do this. Uh, this ratio will change if the spine is curved or anything like that. Uh, but if it in rest is about one to one to one. Here. Okay, cool. Then we got this guy up here and then where his head is. But then this also leads more to compare. So like how big is the neck? You know, is the neck, say, similar to a rib cage? No, it's about half the size of a rib, rib cage. OK, is the neck similar to the tail? And obviously this changes depending on the species or even down to just the dog. So that's not really a great general measurement thing. But keeping in mind, OK, like half the rib cage. OK, or maybe even like how many necks would fit in the entire body? That's another Another decent way to kind of measure some of this out. Or actually, what's even more helpful, probably, how big is the neck compared to the head, right? Because the head's like that, and the neck is like this, so this is pretty- fucking damn it. Fucking layers, pooping ass. Okay. With the neck and the head like that, that's almost one-to-one -one also, right? So we're making these little connections, and then with this, we're, we're able to- like, you gotta keep this stuff in mind, it's like- You'll notice this stuff now, and then tomorrow you might forget some of it. And you're gonna be like, well, fucking, what was it? Was this the, was the neck and the head the same, or was it, fuck. And that's what the references are for. You want to come back to these eventually, and you'll be like, oh, that's right, one-to-one. -one. Okay. Oh, that's right, the skeleton's about this. Oh, the rib cage is about half of the body. Oh, okay, okay. See, so, like, and every time you come back and do these, you're going to like notice more different stuff depending on where you're at as an artist. So maybe, you know, right now you're noticing these big shapes, but then maybe later on you're like, oh, fuck, there's like, look at this. There's like this little raised edge here and then uh, there's a dip here and then it kind of goes back up. Like the highest part isn't the hip or anything like that, like on a cow. It's it's like the back. The back is higher, right? So now you're getting these like smaller details in a draw. Um, and then now you could take this stuff. Oh, look, the elbow is here, but the rib cage is up here. So like the elbow is going to be lower than the rib cage. Huh. OK. Is the knee about there, too? The knees seems to be yeah, it's about similar, similar height. You know, so the rib cage is going to be higher than the knee and the and, and the elbow. OK, so Again, you're going to be noticing all these things and you're you're filing it away in your mental library for stuff to recall later on. And again, you're not going to remember everything. There's no way. It's impossible because this is just a dog. And I've already pointed out like 30 things about this dog. And then you're going to look at a different dog like a fucking Chihuahua. And you're like, oh, shit, there's quite a bit of stuff that's different here. Not all of it's different, but there is differences. And damn. And that's just two different dogs, right? And then you're like, okay, well, what about cats? Well, fuck me. We got house cats. We got big cats. We got whatever, dude. So there is a ton to this. However, the best thing about animals is that a lot of them do kind of like, there's a lot of similarities, right? So let me pull up a cat skeleton just to kind of share to show. Look at my cat skeleton. I'm sharing it. Yay. Okay, hold on. I'm just saying that because it sounded weird. I don't actually have one on screen yet, so no worries. Is this one 3D? I hope not. Don't be 3D. Okay, no, it's not 3D. The lighting kind of looked weird on it. Okay. So yeah, all right. Let's just like line these up as best as we can. 
and then we'll kind of like note some of the differences. Boop, 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 boop. But that's pretty fucking close. Yeah, one of the biggest differences you could probably immediately tell is that a cat is longer, like in ratio. This cat, the skeleton seems to like get quite a bit longer. Uh, you know, even as I shrink it, it's still like proportionately longer. The neck is a little smaller. Uh, but the rib cage is similar in proportion. Um, it looks like the forearm bone. The humerus is, wait, humerus? Femur? This one? Humerus. Uh, the humerus looks to be shorter. Let's close this. And then we'll fucking get out of here, Starbucks! You're not allowed. Okay, let's just actually make this a little bit. Oh god, this is gonna be confusing. <laughs> Well, you can start to see the differences. Also, I guess this isn't really, like, lined up perfectly. Um, but yeah, you also see how very similar this is, right? Like, a, a fucking cat and a dog, they're pretty different animals, but down in the bones, there's a lot of similarities here. There's, you got the same little divot with the spine that I pointed out earlier. Um, wonk, whoops. Wonk, wonk, right? Again, the hip is not the highest point. You got... You got the same actual bones, the same, like, mechanical bones that are at work here. You have a hip, you have a fucking femur. Humerus? Femur? Femur. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> you got a shin bone, you got the heel. Look how low that heel sits. Dogs are, like, pretty up. Upright. And then... God damn it, Starbucks. I swear to God. Alright, and then, <laughs> like, a cat is, like, much lower here, but that's not all the time. Obviously, a cat will be on its toes at more at some point more than another. Uh, if you want a really different animal, but that's still very similar, let's, let's bring out a horse skeleton. Again, this isn't about specific animal anatomy. Right now, we're just making comparisons to, like, what they look like and kind of the similarities and why knowing the general ratios are going to help you a fuck ton when you're making animal art, because... You know, if you learn a few of them, you'll have a lot more command over them than, I don't know, you would if you didn't. So, <laughs> it's a dumb way of putting that, but it's true. So, creatures like a horse, and this gets really cool too, because this has to do with, uh, hold on, I transform, flip that bitch. Uh, this starts to get into kind of more the physics of like how an animal is made and like how they function and stuff and their like how their bones are made to support them. Whoa, dude! First off, look at how fucking bitch ass huge his rib cage is. Fucking dude! God damn, dude! Like what the shit, man? You could holy shit. All right. So, anyways, big ass rib cage, man. Holy fuck! Immediate difference there. Look. Uh, so we got the same. Oh shit! Get over here. We got the same square thing going on. Notice that? It's kind of weird, right? Weird. It's like animals are all the same. They're not. But fucking look how much that ribcage sticks out. God damn. I just, like, I'm still learning that. I thought they were less like that, but that's fucking damn. Okay, anyways. So one of the biggest differences here, and you'll find this with anything that's really heavy. So a horse, like elephants, um, Fucking like uh, hippopotamuses, rhinoceroses, stuff like that. Uh, ungulates in general generally are kind of like this, especially when they get older. Is that their their legs and their their arms are like like they're pretty much like pillars. They're like solid fucking. The bones are insanely thick on these guys because they have to hold up all their their the fucking fat asses the whole time. And you know, no shame on being a, a fat ass horse, my dudes. Uh, but also, like. They, their natural state is more like straight up and down rather than like a dog or a cat's they kind of got this curve going on right there's a dog here's a cat here's a horse and most part for the most part they're they're gonna be locked up and down like this because it's just the most like sturdy support or sturdy way to like support that much weight um, you'll start to see some differences in some ungulates like uh, like a deer or something um, deer skeleton. But they're supposed to be a bit more agile because they gotta fucking run away. Oh, okay, cool. This is a good... Good kind of, uh, example. 
Oh, that one's pretty. You can't see because I'm not showing. Ha! Uh. I think this one has to be young. I don't know. That one, it looks too wiggly. Excuse me as I sort through the reference to, you know, choose exactly what I want to describe, apparently. No, I'll probably get a couple. To find good ones. This is surprisingly a lot less. Like that one just looks wrong. I don't know about that one. Ah, I'm gonna pull it in because it's fucking weird. Like, look how long this boat is. I don't know about that. I don't know. That seems like bogus to me. These guys could fuck up too, so. Let's, uh, like this one looks better. Pull this out. Get out of here. See, they still got the, the kind of like pillar thing going on here. This is like not quite as much of the swoopy as I was kind of hoping to show, but it's, you know, it's kind of there. Here's another example. This one's swoopy as fuck, but I think it's a bit this like like when they're younger, they're a lot more knock kneed and like less stable, like a, a young deer. And you can see like a cow, a calf or something, too. They're just fucking like wobbling all over the place, too. So, like, but the older they get, they get kind of more, like, sturdy and stuff, too. So, okay, whatever. We're getting into the fucking specifics of animal anatomy, which I said this wasn't about. So, we're gonna just pull all the way the fuck back and talk about dogs and, like, how breaking it down and doing the, the ratios is important. But I do want to reiterate that I went through all that process and all, all of that those chains of tangents to kind of show you how... How knowing like any of this and then eventually you'll learn it all just because it kind of it just spreads, you know, you're like, well, what's a fucking dog look like? What's a cat look like? What's a rhino look like? And then you're going to start to pull these conclusions. You're going to start to learn about the biology of the animal, how it works, what it does, its function, you know, and how it's actually built to perform these functions. So like it's just a slippery slope you learn one thing and then you're like cool well what does this do well, what does that do and things are similar yet they have their own like just general specific specifics whatever um back to dogs 